Hello. So we have the pleasure of interviewing with the former student, Bashoy. He has been with Caution Tape Robotics for the past five years, and this September will be pursuing an engineering major. As he prepares to embark on his journey towards an engineering field, he shares his challenges, achievements, and experiences with us. His story aims to inspire current and future students who are passionate about robotics and engineering. Let's delve into his journey and learn from his valuable insights. So, how has your experience with Caution Tape Robotics influenced your decision to pursue an engineering major? So, what Caution Tape Robotics helped me do was narrow down which engineering field I'd like to pursue. Um, in terms of robotics, there's like three different aspects to it. There's the mechanical side, there's the mechanical design, and there's also the coding aspect. And what Caution Tape helped me do was uh, it let me, it taught me the skills I need for each section, and then it helped me narrow down which section I like the most and which section I'd like to pursue for the rest of my life. And that would be the mechanical aspect, as I didn't enjoy sitting down on a computer and programming. I'd like to get my, you know, get my hands dirty play with the, me the mechanical aspect of it and also uh, create designs that I could be able to bring to reality, whether that be through using Fusion 360 or even just drawing it on a whiteboard. Okay, so what have been some of your most memorable projects or achievements that you've been a part of during your time with Caution Tape Robotics? So I think the most memorable, um, I guess, most memorable achievement was uh, the per this year's provincial competition where we were tournament finalists and we also won the design award. And the reason it meant so much to me was because it allowed us to not only qualify for worlds but double qualify for the for the world championships, and it meant a lot as it was my last year, and I was uh, going to be able to go one more time before I retire. And we worked and in, like insanely hard to be able to accomplish this. And what it allowed us to do was come closer together as a team, and also showed us that work hard, uh, working hard does pay off. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So can you describe a particularly challenging moment you faced in robotics and how you overcame it? Yeah, so it's similar to uh, what I mentioned before about trying to get to the World Championships because uh, in the spin-up season, we were unable to qualify. And the reason for that was um, poor, uh, poor not poor team management, but poor team teamwork in, as a whole. We were, our notebook wasn't prepared well. Um, the robot had a lot of issues. As a whole, we struggled with time management and we struggled to work together as a team properly. So what we did was the next season, we came together as a team, we created a, a whole system or um, a whole infrastructure around having the notebook, our interviews, and our um, and our robot, a robot schedule. So we would use some things like Kanban systems as well as also just being closer together as a team, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of each individual and knowing what it truly means to be a team working together and not only has this helped me in terms of robotics, but this issue or this problem, solving it and finding these solutions also helped me work with teams outside of robotics, such as in the school clubs and things like that. It allowed me to set up infrastructures there as well in terms of, uh, for example, I started the coding club at my school and it was also poorly managed, but the things I learned from Caution Tape, I took that with me and I also applied it to the school and it's also one of the biggest clubs at our school now. Yeah, that sounds amazing, but adding on to that, what skills have you developed through your involvement with Caution Tape Robotics that you believe will be the most valuable towards your engineering studies in the future? So I guess the biggest skills were our um, communication and interviewing skills. Uh, these actually helped me currently to get into the programs I needed for university as each university application requires an interview as well as a sub application. And what Caution Tape helped me do was give me years of practice before I even knew that I needed these skills. I was just doing it for the sake of trying to compete, trying to get these awards. I didn't know that these actually had real world applications until I was applying for universities. And I realized these interviews came a lot easier to me than to my fellow peers who were struggling a lot with the interviews. And then when they saw my interviews, they told me, how did you get so good at doing these? And I was like, oh, well, I've been doing it for five years already. I didn't know I'd be this good at it, but it was pretty effective. And these skills are what I learned from robotics. So not only did robotics teach me um, just the lingo of the field, such as uh, what the engineering design process is, but it also taught me how to be more extroverted, how to talk about the field, how to be more passionate about what I'm talking about, and how to talk with more emphasis. And that is a crucial skill. And not only that, but it also taught me um, how to think creatively and outside the box, um, for example, how to make different design solutions and know that not every solution is perfect and that it can always be improved. And so these skills are what I'd be taking away the most most effective skills. That is amazing. So how has working in a team environment at Caution Tape Robotics prepared you for the collaborative nature of an engineering field? 
So as I said before, each um, the engineering has multiple sections. And to come up with a final product, you need uh, several different uh, sets of skills. So as I said before, I'm mainly mechanical. I do mainly mechanical and designing. But to uh, finalize a design and to make it work perfectly, you also need someone who's focused more on, let's say, the mathematical aspects of it, doing the calculations, or also, for example, uh, doing the software aspect of it, which is a heavy part of engineering. And you can't accomplish these things on your own. Uh, you may try to, but you will also find yourself lacking in certain areas. And that's why you'd need to work together with other people. And what Cautious Tape Robotics uh, taught me was you can't do everything on your own and you'd have to rely on your team members. And you need to also help them uh, accomplish this goal. So not only do, 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 it's not just each person does the role and you're done. No, you're working together. So yes, each person has their main role, but you also need to work with your teammates to accomplish their goals as well. Yeah, that sounds great. So what advice would you give to current and future students who are considering joining a robotics team or pursuing a career in engineering? So for uh, future students who are interested in pursuing a career in robotics, I'd say just try it, find out, see if you like it or not. You'll like certain aspects of it and you won't like others. Just keep going and keep trying uh, to improve uh, certain things you like. And then for current students, what I'd like to say is stick with it. It does pay off in the end. And it pays off a lot. Like, I didn't know how much it would help me. And I found out later on that the only reason I got into the certain programs that I wanted to get into was because of my career in robotics. So. Yeah, that's great. So can you talk about any of the mentors or role models who have significantly impacted your journey in robotics and engineering? Yeah, so those, of course, would be my coaches who helped me out. There's Daniel Yu, Mahar Soni, Elliot Eidelman. They all helped me uh, in terms of giving me advice from their experiences and they're, um, they're just a plethora of knowledge. And I guess the biggest piece of advice that I got was from Daniel, where he told me that a boss, a leader isn't a boss. A leader is someone who works with their team and helps them accomplish their goal. And the leader actually does most, is the one who works the hardest on the team. It's not someone who just gives orders. And that's something that I take to this, that I use to this day. That's amazing. So how do you balance your academic responsibilities with your commitments to caution tape robotics? Well, so again, as I said before, uh, we struggled as a team with time management and I struggled on my own uh, as well with time management. I used to just leave tests till the last day and then study the day before. And then because of this, because I was spending so much time in robotics, I did lack in my academic area. And then so how I fixed that was I just tried to create a sort of equilibrium or um try to live in a holistic lifestyle. And then what that means was I allocate an amount of time each day for a certain task. So for robotics, I'd say I'd go to the club four hours and then I'd set aside, depending on the subject, two hours, three hours of studying each day. And that just helped me just get it. Just keep a calendar, have it on your phone, set notifications. That's the best thing that could help you. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, final question, looking ahead, what are your goals for your engineering studies and careers? And how do you see your experience with Caution Tape Robotics contributing to those goals? So my short-term goal, goals currently would be able to, to be able to try and get a co-op placement. And that would, be, that would mean applying for jobs and doing more interviews. And as I said before, the skills I got from Caution Tape that I actually didn't know were such uh, like important skills were these interview skills. So I assume that these skills would translate to um, helping me find a co-op placement as well. And other transferable skills, such as being able to use Autodesk and Future 360, being able to uh, code, being able to also understand mechanic mechanical concepts, all these transferable skills I would take with me to accomplish these goals. And then my long-term goal would also be to try and uh, start up my own start up my own small company or just try to manage a team to be able to succeed in the university, as well as to be able to take it with me outside of the university and continue with it. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you for having me.